What's up everyone? I'm Jeff Teague in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm your Toyota resource. Today we're going to learn a little, no actually we're going to learn a lot about 2021 Toyota Camry. This is the SE. It's in blueprint color. That's a new color for 2021. I'm going to show you how to research this one. I'm also going to show you how to learn about the car that maybe you've just bought. We're going to learn buttons, controls, dials, specs, performance. We got a lot to talk about. Let's go. Uh. The first thing I want to do is do a walk around and we're just going to give a little bio. If this was a dating app profile, we'll tell you that, yeah, you should be interested. You should give it a swipe. This is the best-selling midsize sedan in America for the last 19 straight years. And SE is one of those sporty, it's sleek, it's aerodynamic. It's got those features inside and out that might lead toward just your regular average old buyer or somebody who wants looks and style and a little bit of Camry performance going on here. It's beautiful. I love this blueprint color. And of course, when it's in the sun, it's gonna pop even more. Now it looks kind of bluish black. The first thing we're gonna do, I'll lay out a little outline, a little map here. We're gonna talk about performance, then we're gonna go to the front end. We'll talk about the profile, the back end, and then I'm gonna go to the inside, show you the seating and all the buttons and then controls and the dials. And then we're gonna talk price. We'll show the window sticker, including options. So performance, this has a sport tuned suspension. That's different from what you'd find on something like an LE or an XLE. You're gonna feel more one with the road with this particular one. It doesn't mean that the bumps are gonna hit your lower back and like, oh, that rattle my spine, that kind of thing. You just feel a little bit heavier steering wheel, I think, and you just feel a little bit more muscle. You feel more grounded to the road, if that makes any sense. And anybody who's driven one probably gets a general feel for what I'm talking about here. This is a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. It's matched with an eight speed automatic transmission, and that's gonna give you 203 horsepower and 184 foot pounds of torque, okay? And then it's going to be smooth, it's gonna be comfortable. I call it zippy. I know that's not a technical term, but if you've ever driven a car that just has a little bit of pep to it, you'll know what I mean. That's one reason why my wife liked my old Camry XLE is because shoo, it really flies when you're getting up to your top speed or going up a hill or just trying to pass somebody on a country road. It does have soundproofing. And then this is something I wish that they would do the pneumatic lifts, I guess, but they do have a prop rod. So, I mean, it does hold it in place and I guess that's a benefit. What do you think? Engine performance. Mm. You'll know the difference between an SE and something like an LE or an XLE because it's gonna have more wire mesh to it. It's gonna have more honeycomb looking grill type features on it. This has Toyota Safety Sense 2.5. It's the latest evolution of Toyota Safety Sense. One of the big impressions that hit me is the intersection support. So if you're turning left at a traffic light right here and you're waiting to turn left, it alerts you if you're trying to turn and there's a car coming this way or maybe a person in the crosswalk or a car in the crosswalk that might get in your way, it alerts you and then it could potentially stop you. So that's a big benefit there in the evolution of Toyota Safety Sense. This has what's called by led headlights and it's got LED daytime running lights as well. You'll see on something like an XLE or XSE, it's gonna have what's called full LED headlights and they look more integrated, I guess you can say, but that's what this one is. And then here's a close up look. This has been redesigned or refreshed, I guess you can say the front end. It has more curve appeal, as we can say. It's more flowing, rounded. It's more modernized, I think, from 2020 model year. If you've compared the two, what do you guys think? The first thing I wanna show you on the SE is going to be the key. If you do not have the convenience package, you're gonna get a traditional key that you just pop right into the steering column and start it that way. This one here has the convenience package, so it's gonna to upgrade to your smart key, has lock, unlock, trunk hold, that kind of thing. But it also has an unlock feature where if I lock it, keys in my pocket, I got one hand in my pocket and the other one is given a peace sign. I'm gonna turn the accessories on so that you can see what the blind spot monitor looks like here. And then what I'll also do, we're coming around here, I'll show you the turn signal that's in the side mirror. There's your blind spot monitor. Let's look at that profile. 
This one has an optional moonroof added to it. We'll see that a little bit closer. It has 18 inch alloy wheels. They're gloss black with metallic. Just like that. Let's see if we can get the, some people like this. Show you the type of tire that it is. And then you'll notice it has rocker panels along the side. It has 12 inch disc brakes in the front. In the rear, it's 11.06 inches disc brakes also. The fuel tank, 15.8 gallons, 28 in the city, 39 on the highway, combined of 32. Also, you'll notice that it has chrome trim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This particular car has window tint added. We did that right here in Raleigh. Camry SE comes with bi-combination LED tail lights. It also has backup camera right here. Of course, Camry and Toyota symbol and the trim level is all in chrome. It's got these diffusers right here. That's for aerodynamics and also for looks. It's single exhaust with dual chrome pipes. You can open up the trunk from your key, but also if you're looking for the grippy, normally you'd expect it right here in the center, but it's actually off to the side here. So we'll push that, see that? The cargo capacity is 15.1 cubic feet. I think it's nice and tall and wide and deep. Should be able to store quite a bit in here. It's got hooks, probably for a cargo net, I would say. Look at the engineering on this one here. If you want to do tire work, lift and hook. Bend and snap. Bend and snap. My snap was all over the place. All right, look at this. Notice the good engineering here. This soundproofing actually fits the wheel well quite nicely that way you don't hear a lot of road noise coming from the back of the car it has a temporary spare tire it's a 17 inch you really only want to drive it as little as you need to until you get it replaced if you want to lower these let's say you've got a two by four or a skis or a broom what you do just push it right through once you pull those pins Just like that. I know I can do it. There. There's a little bit of a Buffalo Bill hump here, but it opens up what you can do with the cargo capacity. Don't change the diesel. Turn it up a little. I got a dining room full of fine dime bristles. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you sticking around here. Please subscribe to my channel if you like this so far. I teach you about the cars that you might be researching, and I teach you all about the cars that you've bought afterward. So stick around on the channel. I think you'll have some fun and hopefully you'll learn a little. I appreciate you all. Ash gray is one interior choice that you could pick. You could go with black. And of course, in other Camrys, you could choose beige. You could choose cockpit red in certain ones. It's all up to you. Let's look at the back seating. I want to show you that it does have places for child seat latches. Really easy to get to. And it also comes with overhead latches. Because parents, that's one of the criteria that you look for is, is it easy for car seat installation, removal, that kind of stuff. Let's look up here. All right, we got LED pocket lights. Right there, we got our OS handles. Is it here too? Oh, bleep. If you got crazy drivers, you might wanna know that. Two different pockets. So on road trips, both kids can put their iPads in there or their music or their coloring books or their stuffed animals or whatever they want. This is a very, very nice, one of the nicest armrests that I've seen yet with nice deep cup holders very comfortable for trips. And then it also has a nice deep bottle holder as well. This is a floating screen. It's gonna be a seven inch screen. You'll probably know if you're somebody who wants seven inches or nine inches, that would be the size choices that you can get on your Camry, not eight inch anymore. 
So if you're looking for eight inches, you're out. Go with the 2020. Now, what about the seating material? It looks like it's a couple different kinds. Is that right? It's right. What you've got is soft tex outside with fabric insert. See that? But it's got a really cool pattern to it that's sporty. It's also a little bit of luxury and class, I think. I just like it. I'm a fan of ash interior. That's the color that I always get unless I don't have a choice. Black interior is just not for me, but that doesn't mean it's not for you. So we've got a power seat, which can raise you up, down, twist it, lumbar support. Let's show that. Okay, with our power seat, first of all, we're going to take it down. How low can you go? Now we're gonna go up higher. This is straight up on the button. So it does go up quite a bit. You can also twist the seat as well, like this. Like this, ah, it's getting breezy out here and my floor mat, my paper mat that they give you has blown away. I gotta go get it. But first I gotta show the seat. Then I'm gonna be racing to get it. All right, so while you're driving, help me, somebody save my horse. You can recline all the way on trips. That way you can get in some sleep while you're getting some windshield time as well. Kids don't try that at home. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my whole life. Holla. Okay. And then this has lumbar support. So the roller comes out right here. It's like alien and Sigourney Weaver to give you more or less support for your lower back. So that's what this seat can do. The next thing I want to do is show you the mirror adjustment. You just go left with this one and right. Turn it to the right for the passenger side. And then what we're gonna do is when we move it to the driver's side, we just move it like a joystick. See that, we're just moving the joystick and you get it right. Then we're gonna check these windows here. One touch. One touch opens that one. How about the other ones? One touch. Oh yeah, baby. Woo, one touch. Yep, it works. Remember, all Toyotas have Toyota Care. Two years or 25,000 miles of no charge servicing. It's a good deal. By the way, it's made in Georgetown, Kentucky. Some people like to see that component sheet. And then if these windows will not open, look, I'm pushing this. It's not working. It's because I have that blocked out. If I have this blocked out, you cannot use those windows. So you got to unblock. One thing you'll want to know is you do need to get floor mats for your car because you don't want to have, you don't want to buy a car and then all of a sudden you put your dirty, mud, muddy, wet feet on the floor. So you either get carpeted mats or you get the all weather rubber mats. And then you always want to make sure that they're clipped in so that you cannot, cannot move them. So just put them in, lock them in. There you go. Here's the push pedal brake. It's not an electronic parking brake that you might see on something like an XSE. Here's the hood release. Good for drive through change, I always say. And then this is the lever that moves the steering wheel in and out, up and down. It's a leather wrapped steering wheel. And then you lock it into place. Automatic high beams are off. Now they're on. Traction control on and off. This is nothing, this is nothing, this is nothing. Hold that down to open up the trunk. Hold that down to open up the fuel door. Holla. Oh, I wanna go back to that fuel door. When you get gasoline, you probably know this already, but make sure that when you're tightening the cap after you fill it up, click it once. Because if you don't, it's gonna say your check engine light might come on. Look at that blue color, whoa. Your multimedia screen, all Camrys play Apple CarPlay apps, Android Auto apps, Amazon Alexa, and Sirius XM. Okay, but how do you set up the home screen? See how it has three different sections on it? Let's set that up for you. So go to Menu, Setup, and then we'll go to Customize Home Screen. There it is. Now this says change the layout. We've got audio, phone, and our eco information. So do we want four pieces of information too? three or three let's do four 
And then audio, eco, phone, and clock. All right, so once we change that, now it has four pieces of information. So that's one thing that you can do, audio. We've got AM, FM, Bluetooth, that's what's on your phone, once you have your phone paired, or Sirius XM. So let's go to Sirius XM. Let's change our sound because you want to have the best sound for you, not for what the manufacturer wants you to have. So the default is nothing. So I like to think the best sound for me has always been three treble, three mid, and two bass. You can adjust that however you want. Do you want everything to the front, to the back, to the left and the right. I like it right in the center. That way everybody gets to hear equally and it sounds great. Automatic sound levelizer, what does that do? Well, when you accelerate, your engine makes a little bit more noise than if you were going at a low speed. So will the radio be heard accordingly? Do you want to adjust the sound as you accelerate? So high would be high sound as you go faster. Or do you want a little bit? or none, you adjust. Presets, what you do is, if I want Sirius XM6, okay, now that's Sirius XM6. I always do, nobody does it better. Come on, feel the noise. Girls, walk your boy right now. Hi. One, and da 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 da, two, blah 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 blah. Oh, I don't know this one, actually, but I do recommend this station right here. I love Pop Rocks. It's like seventy, or I'm sorry, it's like nineties, two thousands, sort of like a little bit of pop rock to it, a little bit of edge. I love it. Now, if you're pairing your phone, it doesn't matter if you have an Android or an iPhone. What you want to do is just hit phone. And it'll say there's no Bluetooth device registered. Would you like to add one? You push yes. You'll want to set up Bluetooth on your phone. And then it'll start giving you codes. Like, do you want to have this particular phone added? I don't think I have Bluetooth on right now. But that's what it would do. It would say Jeff's iPhone. I just have my Bluetooth off. So just look for that. Push that. And then it should activate it. You should be fine. I think the temperature controls are pretty self-explanatory. It is digital, so you can adjust. This is where the air comes out. Just follow the pictures. This is front defroster, rear defroster, and side mirrors. And then this is, if you want the coldest air, you'll have air conditioning on with recirculated air. If you want to pull in air from the outside, you turn off the recirculated air, and that'll be your warmest air. Sometimes it feels a little stuffy in North Carolina, so I like to do reconditioned air conditioning. Got a USB port and a 12 volt circular port. We also have a little pocket here. And then in the center, we've got two different ways to charge, just depending on what type of an input you need. USB, Mac, that kind of stuff. And then let's look got bottle holder. SE has a metallic accent here. And then this stores quite a bit. Your owner's manual takes up a lot of it though. Whoop, whoop. Push button start. Remember you got push button start because you have the convenience package. And again, we're gonna look at that pretty soon, but that's one start way. And then this right here, this is controls that you would see on your steering wheel. They're basic functions so that you do not have to look down or up or away. Now, first thing we wanna do is get rid of that screen, okay? What you do is, just for a short time, it'll take it away, okay? Now you can see your digital speed, but when that my, uh, message comes up again, you wanna push that again to get rid of it. This is to pick up a call, that's to hang up a call. This right here, voice commands. If you hold it down and you have an iPhone, you'll do Apple CarPlay. Hold it down for like two or three seconds and then it'll give you, it'll go beep or boop. And then you say, play Huey Lewis in the news, if this is it. 
okay? Or if you just push it once. Before you start, consider I don't wanna do the tutorial. Tune to Sirius 90s on nine. 90s on nine. Okay. See, it did that right now. That's how you do that one. You can also say, beep, call wifey, call so-and-so. Okay, this is how you turn on your cruise. You have to set it first of all, or activate it. What you wanna do is just push this, it says radar ready, and then this sets your speed when you're at 72 or 75 or 47, whatever you want it to be. I'm gonna shut this door. All right, so now this right here, Fine, we'll turn it on. All right, so now, Camry. Now what we wanna do is this right here sets it, and then you set your speed there. If you wanna adjust the radar cruise control, this is the distance between you and cars in front of you. The car backs you off, so you're not too close. Okay, this is big. That's a wide, wide conservative distance. Push it again, that's a middle distance. And then that's if you wanna get closer to cars. I'm probably comfortable with a two or even a one. If you want your lane departure alert on, it's gonna have you not only in your lane, but it's gonna keep you in your lane as long as each side of your lanes are marked. Like it would not keep me in my lane here at the park because there are not stripe or solid lines, okay? So you have to, to get the lane tracing assist to work, you push this and then push this. Okay, now it says steering assist active, lane centering active. That'll beep at you if you go outside of your lane without your turn signal on. If you have your turn signal on, it's not gonna beep at you because it says, oh yeah, they mean to do that. But lane tracing assist, Assist keeps you centered in your lane. This goes between AM and FM and Bluetooth and Sirius XM. This is your preset stations. I think we're good. This is volume of your radio. And then this is the keypad that controls your multi-information display. So let's just go through it and you can see how you do it. Tire pressure, people want that. I'm trying to get a little closer. Trip information, average, how far till you run out of gasoline? I love that one. Eco indicator, it tells you how you're driving. Are you driving to get the best possible gas mileage? Slow accelerations, slow into traffic lights, that kind of a thing. All right, this is your radar. See, when you go over, it's a filing cabinet on each side. All right, so here, this is our lane departure alert and radar cruise control. This is if you've got low tire pressure or you need servicing soon, that kind of stuff. We're gonna skip, no we're not, we're gonna go back. This right here, okay, so let's go to our settings and we're gonna go up. This is rear cross traffic alert. Do you want it off or do you want it on? Remember rear cross traffic alert works in combination with blind spot monitor. RCD, I stopped the camera because I wanted to show a little bit more about this one. This is the rear camera detection and I actually went to the quick guide just to learn a little bit more on it. And that's what I suggest to use. Just go to the quick reference guide here. Rear camera detection, it detects if a pedestrian is behind you when you're backing up, okay? If a pedestrian's there, the buzzer will sound. It shows the people icon, just like that, to let you know that there's somebody there. So do you want that function on or off? I don't see a bad thing for having that on. So remember, if there's a light that's on in orange or red, that's sort of like a little orange or red flag saying, are you sure you wanna turn that off? That's a good safety feature. This is road sign assist. So we're gonna hold that down. Do we want it on, do we want it off? Notification method. Do you wanna be notified above the speed limit? If you're going above the speed limit, do you want a visual cue or visual and audio cue? Okay, and then watch this one. Other Notifications, do you want visual or visual and audio? Okay, how do you want that? And then the notification level. When you're speeding, when you're going above what the camera, which is right here, reads, 
If it's 45, it'll say 45 up here. If you go, for example, 46, it will notify you either audio or visual that you're going above one mile, mile over the speed limit. Do you want three? Do you want five? You can adjust it that way. That's the notification level, okay? And then vehicle settings, okay. Brightness, that's the blind spot monitor, bright. Do you want the blind spot monitor sensitivity? I think it should be fully sensitive. I'm so sensitive. Rear cross traffic alert, tire pressure warning system, rear seat reminder. When you get out of your car, it's gonna tell you that potentially you might have somebody or something in the car that you left, like a backpack or a child or your dog. You don't wanna leave them in the heat. So it'll go beep and let you know. So I think it's good to have that on there. You know, you don't think you're gonna do that. I, I would never do that, but you don't think it, it could happen. What language, what units do you want? Eco, drive info, average speed, total time, units, miles or kilometers. How do you want that? That's under, and then language we can do. English, Espanol and Francais. By the way, my French name in 10th grade French class was Francois. On va à la plage avec les jeunes filles? Oui, ça va, et toi? I don't have my USB cable, so I can't show you how to do Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. I have an iPhone, so it would be Apple CarPlay, but you do have to have your USB cable plugged into the main USB right down here, right by the shifter, in front of the shifter. You have to have that plugged in, and then the car will say, do you want Apple CarPlay enabled on your phone? And you do that, and then it'll show you common apps that you see on your phone, like messaging, and then um, it'll do Waze, Google Maps, iPhone Maps, it'll do phone calls, all that kind of stuff. It coordinates all through there so that you don't be as distracted as you think you might be if you didn't have that. I love my Apple CarPlay. You guys should get used to that, you'll like it. Up here we have auto dimming rear view mirror with three different garage door programming. That's the auto dimming mirror function right there. And then here, LED light, LED light. Let there be LED light. This is a slider so you can block out the sun. I'm gonna block out the sun. And then right here, this is gonna be your moonroof opener. You could also vent it. I'd like a tall, a grande, or a vent it. I like that caramel ribbon crunch frappuccino, frankly, it's really good. What do you guys get at Starbucks? And so this one right here vents it. And then I might wanna shut this. This is safety connect right here. So pushing it with the lid shut won't do anything. But if I were to do that, it would say, welcome to safety connect. Is there an emergency? And then it'll notify you by call center. They'll call you if you get in an accident and the airbags deploy, they'll say, is everything okay? If you don't answer, they'll send emergency personnel to you. They can also track your vehicle. I think those are all really good things. Now this right here, this means your lights are always going to be on your interior lights. You probably don't want that door that means when i open up the door they come on okay i like to have it the door function i think that's the best way to do it now let's say you bought an se because you want a higher performance vehicle you want one with the road you want to be the man or the woman okay maybe you'll want to use paddle shifters here's a little tutorial the first thing on the steering wheel see the plus and minus right here minus plus okay and then see this right here this is park reverse neutral drive or s sequential shifting okay so let's move that down here okay that means i get to drive the car like it's a stick shift so what you want to do is you can drive it watch this you can push it like this see that every time i pop it I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember it's an eight speed automatic transmission or you can just make it simple on yourself and let the car do all the work for you. Okay, now let's say we want paddle shifters. So we go, see this? You just right down here. We're gonna, and then 
see it goes plus, plus, plus. And then on the other side down here, you go seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and we'll try it one more time. And here's what the horn sounds like. The best advice I have for you is don't be intimidated by the car and all the technology because you don't have to learn it all at once. Just pick one thing and this week I'm going to learn how to do paddle shifters. This week I'm going to learn how to pair my phone and set up my music. So just do one thing at a time. Don't be overwhelmed. Don't let it get to you. And then remember, the owner's manual is your friend. The quick reference guide is probably even more of a friend to you because it's gonna show you what those lights that you might see on your dash look like um, and what they mean. So what is that icon? Oh yeah, that's traction control, blah, 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 blah. By the way, you probably wanna have your traction control on. So if it says traction control off, turn it back on. Traction control is your friend. It keeps you from spinning your wheels and things like that. So that might be what I recommend to you. But anyway, have fun with this one. I've owned three Camrys in the past, 96, a 15, and an 18. I would have gotten another one had I not seen the 21 Venza. Boom, I love it. But anyway, I think you'll like it. It's smooth, quiet, comfortable, and more importantly than anything, it's super dependable. It'll last you longer than you can imagine. It'll be your new best friend. You'll love it. Here we go, it's window sticker time, baby. Woo, SEs, all Camrys are made in Georgetown, Kentucky. Blueprint, EA10, that's the code for your interior. You can get SE in front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Look at the perfect safety ratings on this bad boy here. And then here's the fuel mileage, 32, 28, 39, hike. It's got very good emissions as well. Okay. Here's the pricing, okay? Before you add in options and delivery, 26, 485. We'll go back to those in just a minute, but I wanna show you the standard features. See that sport tune suspension? And then Toyota Safety Sense, 2.5 plus. This has 10 different airbags, by the way. 18 inch machine finished alloy wheels. Sometimes I can't talk after all this. You'll see everything that's included here on interior features. Okay, these are three of the four main options that you could get. You can also upgrade from audio to audio plus. This has blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, convenience of smart key, and also the home link with the auto dimming rear view mirror, and then the moonroof. And then we're gonna deliver it, 29,645. And then we've got carpet floor mats, LED interior lights, And then this is the final price, about $30,000. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. Thanks everyone so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. What do you think of Camry? What trim level of Camry is best for you? Are you an SC fan? Which of those options would you add in? Audio Plus, would you add in convenience package? Maybe the blind spot, maybe the moonroof. Those are four big options. What about some interior lights? Those kind of things. All right, write a comment. Leave a comment and say, hey, Jeff, have a great weekend. Leave a comment and say, Jeff, I hate your guts. Your jokes are not funny. Leave a comment at all. I really appreciate it. And please hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell. I'm on Instagram at Toyota Jeff One. I'm on Facebook at Toyota Jeff. I write for Torque News, torquenews.com slash Toyota. I'm on TikTok, Toyota Jeff Two. See everybody later. Follow toyotajeff.com. Peace, enjoy your weekend, see ya. I've said enough. <laughs>